We're on the verge of probably the greatest technological revolution that the world has ever known. And there's a surprising amount of people that have little to no idea of what's going on. The convergence of a few key technologies has made this possible. So today I wanna to talk about where we're at currently, where we're likely to be headed, and why you should even care in the first place and how it affects you. So if you want the two second version, the linchpins behind this revolution are artificial intelligence and robotics. Do you remember those little AI chatbots that you'd sometimes come across on larger websites? Well, they've gotten really, really good. So good, in fact, that billions of dollars are being poured in to the artificial intelligence industry. In the past couple of years, a company by the name of OpenAI has started releasing chatbots that have done incredibly well with the public. They're generally known as ChatGPT. There was three, there's four, now there's 4.0. But essentially it's the same premise as before where you sit down at a computer and you can talk with these bots via text or also sometimes via voice now as well. ChatGPT actually reached 100 million weekly active users just two months after its release, making it one of the fastest growing applications in history. When such an incredible amount of growth like that happens, it can be a sign that a technology is going to have a massive impact on the world. So needless to say, many companies have pivoted since then to start working harder on artificial intelligence. You might be wondering why did it grow so rapidly? And the answer is these large language models like ChatGPT are really useful. You can use it to compose emails in your tone and style. You could use it to summarize large pages of text that you don't wanna read. You could use it to, to re-explain things in terms that a four or five year old could understand if you're trying to read something that's kind of dense. You could use it to do your homework or to write your college essay. That's been a really big issue actually. And if you're in school, I guarantee you've likely heard of ChatGPT. These chatbots are still far from perfect. They do something that's called hallucinating where they will just start making stuff up out of thin air. The tricky thing is it will look and sound like legitimate content. There have been lawyers that have tried to use ChatGPT for their work and it would reference cases that didn't exist, but they looked legitimate. So in a professional context, you still need to be really careful how you're using ChatGPT, but a lot of people are using it. As of February, 2024, 23% of American adults say that they've used ChatGPT. In the workplace, 20% of employed Americans have also reported using ChatGPT. So again, while it's far from perfect, it's improving rapidly with most experts predicting that we're gonna achieve AGI by 2030. AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. AGI is a hypothetical form of artificial intelligence that possesses the ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks at a level equal to or surpassing human cognitive ability. So again, they're saying we're going to achieve that most likely by 2030 or before. Unlike what we have now, which is called narrow AI, which is designed for specific tasks, AGI aims to replicate the generalized human cognitive abilities allowing it to find solutions to tasks that it wasn't trained for. So imagine knowing everything about everything and then being able to comb all of those libraries and put connections where no one saw connections before. That's essentially how AGI will be in function. It'll be able to make those connections for us, which will lead to a lot of innovation across basically every field. So that's a quick overview of where we're at with AI. I'd wager that more people have heard about that than the next thing that I'm gonna talk about, which is robotics. So when I say robots, I'm not just talking about Roombas or the mechanical arms that we see on assembly lines. I'm actually talking about robots that have the form factor of a human. Now you might think that's stupid. That's just something you see in sci-fi movies. Why would we ever make humanoid robots? Well, there's actually a really good reason that robots take the form of a human. You see the world that we're in is designed for us to be able to function and interact with it easily. And so it makes sense that a robot that is mirroring our form factor will have the easiest time interacting with the world that we live in. Robots that are designed to look like humans will be able to open doors, they'll be able to drive cars, they'll be able to use tools that were made for human hands. There are a lot of benefits that having a humanoid form factor robot has, which is why they're currently being pushed for so hard. Experts are saying that we're likely to see over a billion humanoid robots deployed over the next two decades, but I'd wager that they're coming quite a bit faster than that. I'd say within the next five years or so, I'd have to guess we're gonna start seeing a lot more of them. A couple companies that are doing a lot of work in this area would be Amazon 
in their warehouses, they're starting to deploy robots and they're working really hard to get these humanoid robots ready to be deployed at a larger scale to do more work for them. Another company to watch is Tesla. They're working hard on their robots as well. They've got a big leg up because of all of the artificial intelligence already at work in their cars that they're able to redeploy in the robots that they're working on. While these robots are expensive right now, they're getting much cheaper to produce. So as they continue to get cheaper, more people will adopt them. They'll continue to get better, more useful, and ultimately deployed into more types of work environments. So now you know a little bit about AI, you know a little bit about robotics. Now I wanna talk about where we could be headed. This is where I need to be careful because some people get freaked out when they hear the things that I'm about to say. Just know that I'm coming at it from a very optimistic perspective. I believe that these technologies can be used for a substantial amount of good. And while they can be scary as they're adopted, I believe that ultimately things will work out. As you hear everything I say, take it with a grain of salt and just know it's all gonna work out. So first of all, AI and the workplace. It's already displaced some jobs like generative AI, that AI that can make crazy art from just a few words. That's already costing some graphic designers their jobs, unfortunately. There's also coding that's been hit. These chatbots are really good at coding and they're just getting better, which means that pretty soon anyone will be able to code using just normal language without having to know these specific coding languages. A few other areas that it stands to have a big impact would be the healthcare industry, education, law. Those are all areas that it can pretty quickly be implemented in very useful ways immediately. When you introduce robots into the equation, they're able to do a lot of tasks that otherwise couldn't be done by AI. So basically any physical type of job like construction or caretaking, in-home care, those types of things stand to be disrupted by the implementation of these robots. And again, you may still not believe what I'm saying, but when you understand that you could buy one robot, get it for a very cheap price, and then that thing will last maybe 10 or 20 years, it'll work 24 seven. It won't take sick days or be gone on holidays. It'll literally just do its job at the same level for its entire lifespan. You're gonna start to see companies will pay for that because they can save a lot of money. Even if they have to sacrifice a little bit of like the versatility that a human worker has, having a bunch of those robots and then maybe a couple human workers would be the more efficient way to go about things just because of how cheap it's going to be to get robot labor to do these things. And frankly, it's really weird talking about this and it sounds crazy when you talk about it, like that we're literally moving towards a world where there are droid armies like in Star Wars. And while I was kind of joking, that's a whole nother aspect of this thing. Having robots is gonna become a matter of national defense. When you've got a robot, you can very quickly reprogram them to do anything, which includes going to war. The country that has tons and tons of these humanoid robots also has a whole lot of militaristic power because in a conflict, those things could be just very quickly reprogrammed, rebooted, for militaristic applications. While that might sound all bad so far about the robots, it could also have some benefits. It could mean that products become a lot cheaper across the board if they're a lot cheaper to make. The fact of the matter is that currently in the US, there are a lot of jobs that aren't being filled. Initially, these robots will be used to go in and do a lot of those jobs that haven't been getting done, which again, that could be good for the economy, at least in the short run. So that's the direction we could be going with all of this. AI stepping into the workforce, robots stepping into the workforce, and essentially enabling human productivity in a way that we've never experienced. And honestly, guys, that is the most likely outcome that I see. When you look back at how horses were very quickly replaced by automobiles, this time, human beings, we're the horses, and these AI robots are the automobiles. And I stole that from an article on Rethink X, which I'll link in the description if you wanna read it. So let's talk a little bit about why you should care. You should care because there's just a big shift coming in the way that work is done. It's certainly something that I take into consideration now, thinking about my future and what I do for work. You definitely just wanna think about AI, uh, especially in the sphere of online marketing, like generating content for the web. So much content's gonna be made by artificial intelligence. Like I don't know how that's gonna impact the world of blogging or websites, which is a lot of what I've done. For whatever your career path is, just try to think down the line, how are these types of technologies gonna impact your line of work? The good news is new jobs could be created as a result of this, or a lot of them could just be replaced by robots. But what I see is a lot of people hate their jobs anyway. A lot of people aren't doing work that they want to be doing 
So is it really such a bad thing if a lot of robots come in and do that work, which frees them to work on other things or do their creative endeavors or passion projects that they've never had the finances or time to go after? I don't know, but those are things that I think about. If you've ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that's kind of what I think about in terms of robots coming in and doing labor that humans did previously. There's a certain way in which humans function. If we have all of our rudimentary basic needs met, like housing and food and finances, there are different things that we divert our energy to. That may just be more of the direction that we're headed. But again, this technology is going to have a big societal impact. And if your identity is completely intertwined with what you do, then if a robot comes in and starts doing that for you, and you no longer are needed in that area, I feel like there's gonna be a real crisis of purpose. And so people are going to need to be prepared for that and understand where things may be heading. Why you should care is you really just don't wanna be blindsided by all of these things. Again, if you have no idea that these things are coming and then suddenly there's a robot there doing your job, I think that would be pretty surprising for people. So you should care because it's going to impact your life. It's going to impact my life. My intent with this video was not to scare anybody. Honestly, my personality is one that I like challenges. I like change. When I was a kid and my parents told me that we were moving across the country, my first thought wasn't how sad I was to lose my friends. My thought was, I'm excited to go on a new adventure. And that's kind of how I feel about all of this. I think it's a new adventure. It is going to be a lot of change in the way that things are done. But ultimately, I believe that it can and will have some good impacts on humanity. It's a crazy world we live in, but it's also a very exciting time to be alive. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.